James Lights Out Tony was the pure definition of aggressive defense. Like Mayweather, Tony was a master of the Philly shell, but he used it in a much more aggressive way. Tony earned a championship belt in several different weight classes over a long and noteworthy career. One of the most dangerous things about him was his proclivity to suddenly switch gears from an elegant and graceful defensive boxer to a wild, aggressive brawler. And opponents never quite knew just when the switch would flip. What's more, he could fight in a phone booth, playing a game of inches to dodge punches and slip in tight counters. A great deal of Tony's success was due to his deep understanding of the Philly shell. And a big part of the Philly shell is how it makes use of the center line, the imaginary line running through the center of a fighter and his opponent. Because of his narrow stance and folded guard, Tony's rear hand and lead shoulder were always lined up almost directly on the center line, in a prime position to always beat an opponent's punch. Notice how Tony makes sure to remain safely closed off and keep his tighter position by maintaining his lead foot next to his opponent's. Staying closed off and lined up down the center ensured that 1. Tony presented the least amount of openings possible and 2. That he could beat his opponent's punch by following a straighter path and staying on the inside of his strikes, whether he was defending or attacking. Remember, the straighter punch that shoots down the middle will always land first. It's this same dynamic that enabled Tony to use the technique at the heart of his entire style the shoulder roll. There's a reason very few fighters can shoulder roll effectively, let alone rely on it as their primary method of defense. Although it may look simple and straightforward, shoulder rolls require a very high level of nuance and careful judgment. Here Tony shows the simplest and most well-known version, simply turning and popping his shoulder to deflect a punch before countering with his own. But this movement alone is only enough to protect against straights to the chin. Luckily for Tony, he knew how to alter the movement to defend nearly any punch thrown at him. To deflect shots to the temple, Tony pulled back, at times leaning well beyond 45 degrees. This let punches slide off the slant of his lead arm and shoulder. Similarly, Tony crouched and hunched his shoulder against hooks and overhands. After all, it is called a shoulder roll. Against lead hooks, Tony turned and cover blocked. The Philly shell can be said to have a built-in push-pull dynamic, moving in to smother lead hooks and pulling away to roll off rear hand attacks. This same attitude also helps to load up punches, rolling and pulling away to load up a counter rear hand, or smothering to pull back with the lead hook. It's supposed to be harder for Philly Shell practitioners to fight southpaw fighters because the position opens their closed off stance. But if anything, Tony seemed to be even better at it. He made sure to keep an inside foot position to remain closed off and shoulder rolled his opponent's lead hand instead. The open position actually making it easier to return a counter. Tony also practiced low line head movement, and he could pivot out even with his head at hip level. He would stay in this position for a ridiculous amount of time, bobbing off time to remain safe. Broken rhythm was another big part of Tony's style. He would feint changing head slots on the half beat to trick his opponents into wasting punches. In other words, he would give the slightest hint of head movement to get his opponent to fire off a shot, before completely changing direction. Here's a great example of Tony feinting a head slot to draw a punch, and then using that to escape the ropes. With his rolls, head movement, subtle footwork, and broken rhythm, it should be obvious that Tony had a wide range of defensive abilities. But, he added even more through the use of creative shifting footwork. For instance, when advancing, Tony would simply switch to a southpaw Philly shell his head now safely tucked behind his right shoulder, and his left now loaded up as his new power hand. Tony also shifted backwards to roll off of his new lead shoulder. Like the rest of his style, these defensive shifts back were also offensive in nature, loading up hooks with more power by stepping into them. A lot of these dynamics worked in a similar way for Tony at close range. At close range, foot position doesn't matter as much, 
and so Tony was essentially shifting stances each time he moved his head from one side to the other. If Tony was on the left side of his opponent's head, then they were both essentially in orthodox, and on the right side, they were both essentially in southpaw. This matters because it afforded Tony the chance to change which side was his power side, creating room to throw with his new backhand. This is especially important in infighting, when the lead hand is so often pinned or smothered. Once again, Tony would shoulder roll with whichever shoulder happened to be his lead at the time. Incredibly, Tony could be said to have won many of his fights with his back against the ropes. One thing is for sure, it will be a long time before we see another fighter quite like James Tony. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in improving your own skills, you can check out Full Work Wins Fights and Power of the Pros, or pre-order Aggressive Defense, out soon. And make sure to check out our new fight comic, Mortal Weapons. From the Modern Martial Artist, this has been David Christian, wishing you happy training.